How's it going everyone? This is Real American Studios, aka Raz, and I'm here with a very special video. And this is What if Raz took over the WWE? Now I know it's a crazy thought and obviously it's not realistic, but I do want to point out how I think the WWE should be run, as you can see on the layout right here. Uh, there's me on the microphone getting ready to talk. Oh yeah. But, so my scenario is starting out after the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. The briefcases are won by Aleister Black and Shayna Baszler. That's very key. Uh, actually, I'm not really going over the matches that I would book. I'm going over more how I would structure the company. So, if you want to see the matches, you can leave a comment down below. And then you can see how I would book you know, some of the pay-per-views, the bigger ones. Vince McMahon comes out the next night on Raw and announces that he has sold the company to this guy. The music hits. It's Take It All, the theme song from Judgment Day 2008, which is one of my favorite theme songs. I come out. I take the mic from Vince and thank him. We hug. Vince says the show must go on, go on and he leaves. So that night in the main event, I'm already planting the seeds for how the future is going to be. And it's Drew McIntyre defending the title against Shelton Benjamin. And, you know, that's a guy that you really would not expect to be fighting for a WWE championship. Of course, Drew retains. All right. And then on SmackDown, the main event is Braun Strowman putting the Universal title on the line against Cesaro. Once again, planting the seeds for how the company is going to go, how I'm going to build up these superstars. So... Um, after SmackDown's gone, I announced that I think all of the superstars and women and crew have earned time off. So I give everyone two weeks off, or two months off. Operations will resume, resume on Monday, July 20th. Now let's pretend when it comes back on July 20th, this whole epidemic is over. Alright, this is just fantasy. It probably won't be. But there's a crowd... During this time, I established some things while we're off. First, NXT is no longer considered a developmental brand. It is a third brand and part of the main roster. There is no such thing as being caught up to the main roster anymore. Once you leave that uh, performance center, you are on the main roster. Next, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon will continue to write for NXT. Paul Heyman will continue to write for Raw. And I, myself, will be writing for SmackDown for the moment. For the moment. USC and Fox have agreed that um, they'll fill the time slots for episodes of Raw and SmackDown with episodes from Raw and SmackDown during the Ruthless Aggression Era. And Wednesday night... There will be replays of old NXT shows. The first hour will be old NXT shows. The second hour will be replays of episodes of 205 Live. This is key too because I'm basically doing away with 205 Live. Kind of, well, not really, but you'll see later. Also, during this time, I've brought back all of the fired superstars, women and crew. I have also signed back. Zack Sabre Jr., T.J. Perkins, Bad News Barrett, Justin Gabriel, and the huge signing, the guy that's going to return to the ring, C.M. Punk. Because obviously C.M. Punk's thing was this company's never going to get better until Vince McMahon dies, but then Triple H and Stephanie will take over. Well, I'm taking over, and C.M. Punk has faith that it's going to be better. So... Raw officially returns with a draft. They're allowed two stars from SmackDown and two from NXT. Their selections from NXT that they are going to build up into main event stars are Keith Lee and Velveteen Dream. These are two guys that absolutely will be stars if they're booked correctly. You have to book Keith Lee as a monster. You have to book Velveteen Dream as a guy that can put on a match with anyone similar to AJ Styles, Cesaro, Shinsuke Nakamura. They can put on a good match with anyone. All right, and their selections from SmackDown are Cesaro, 
and the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's moving back to Raw, and that is because, I mean, there's a lot of matches I would like to see the Fiend fight on Raw. I would like to see him go against Brock Lesnar. I would like to see him face Drew McIntyre. I would like to see him face AJ Styles. There's a lot of opponents for the Fiend over on Raw. So, and Cesaro, I'm going. I'm putting him on Raw to hopefully build him back up, because on SmackDown, I feel like his time's kind of running out. So, same thing for NXT on Wednesday night. They select Kevin Owens and Rey Mysterio from Raw. So, you just added two huge stars. Kevin Owens is going to be a star on NXT. Rey Mysterio is a guy that's going to NXT, and he's going to help put over some of this younger talent and build these guys up. All right, so Rey Mysterio and NXT is interesting. From SmackDown, they get Chad Gable and Dolph Ziggler. Two guys that both need to be built back up. Number one, we're doing away with the Shorty G gimmick. Chad Gable. It's Chad Gable. And both of these guys are going to put on amazing matches with guys like Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Walter. They're going to put on great matches. All right, so Friday night, SmackDown selects from NXT Johnny Gargano and Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate is probably a surprise, but... I mean, I think he's going to be good. I, I think he's going to be a good wrestler. So, Tyler Bate is going to SmackDown. And from Raw, they get Rusev, who obviously I rehired back, and Ricochet. So, they're going to look to build these two up. So, basically, you know, SmackDown's kind of focused on building guys back up. Raw's focused on building some guys back up, but also make turning guys into stars. NXT is focused on building guys. The entire brand is focused on building new talent. Because one thing, one of my pet peeves with WWE these days is that there's very few stars. There's very few legitimate stars. So why don't we have the main event picture for each show be huge? So for Raw, your main event picture, Seth Rollins, Andrade, the champion Drew McIntyre, obviously briefcase holder Alistair Black, Keith Lee, Velveteen Dream, Cesaro, Zack Sabre Jr., Eric Rowan, CM Punk. These are all guys that... Now, Eric Rowan, I really do think the guy has potential. He was put in a terrible storyline that kind of ruined him. He can be built as a monster. Uh, Randy Orton, obviously. The Fiend, AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley. We're building Bobby Lashley and Samoa Joe. We're building these two back up as monsters. Buddy Murphy, who's a guy that I think has a ton of potential, he put on a hell of a match with Rey Mysterio and should have won that match. So, screw you, Vince. Buddy Murphy should have won. Unless you're going to push Rey Mysterio one last time. He's not winning the briefcase. I'm pretty sure Aleister Black's winning the briefcase. I mean, otherwise, I mean, but Aleister Black doesn't even really need the briefcase because he can win the title on his own. All right, and then with the women... Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, Asuka, Kyrie Sane, Bianca Blair, and Becky Lynch. I mean, you've got plenty of women that can go in the ring. You've got plenty of fresh feuds. You can even start to build up some of these uh, girls on the bottom, too. So, moving over to NXT. Your main event picture for NXT, Kevin Owens, the champion Adam Cole, Finn Balor, Rey Mysterio, just think, Rey Mysterio versus Adam Cole, Rey Mysterio versus Finn Balor, either one of those would be instant classics, Dolph Ziggler and Chad Gable, you're building these guys up, they're going to be stars, Damian Priest, he's a guy I'm kind of high on, Killian Dane, Mansoor, this guy puts on a good match every year at Super Showdown, why not bring him to the main roster instead of him? You know, because I'm no longer doing these Saudi shows, because clearly the wrestlers just, they, they don't really care about them. They're usually awful. We don't need to do the shows in Saudi Arabia. We can do a tour in Saudi Arabia. They do tours all the time. They're non-televised. We can do that. But I'm not doing televised pay-per-views in Saudi Arabia. Maybe every once in a while, because I, I'll explain my new concept for pay-per-views. Um... Matt Riddle, obviously Pete Dunn, Tommaso Ciampa, Walter, all of those guys are no-brainers for main event talent. Candice LeRae, uh, and these are the women now, the women's main event, like 
a lot of women from NXT are being built up. You have Candice LeRae. You have Charlotte the Champion. Dakota Kai. Indy Hartwell, who I saw last night. I think I think she can be a good wrestler. You know, It was obviously a squash match, but I think she can be good. Io Shirai is really good. Casey Catanzaro is really good. Caden Carter. Rhea Ripley is a no-brainer. Tegan Knox is a no-brainer. And then you have Vanessa Bourne. I mean, all of these women are just, they're pretty good. I mean, you know, I mean, that's a no-brainer. And then for SmackDown, the main event picture, obviously you've got Roman Reigns, your champion, Braun Strowman, New Day. Uh, eventually, I think you should split up New Day. I think Kofi and Big E on their own are stars. You could even make Big E a heel with Xavier Woods as his manager. I mean, Daniel Bryan, Shinsuke Nakamura, Sami Zayn is a no-brainer. On Raw, I think I – did I mention Andrade? Because I didn't write him down on here, but I remembered him. Mustafa Ali. He's no longer just Ali. He's Mustafa Ali. All right. Johnny Gargano, Robert Roode, The Miz, John Morrison, Baron Corbin, Tyler Bate, Elias Rusev, Ricochet, Drew Gulak, Jeff Hardy, Lars Sullivan, Sheamus. There's a lot of men that have potential here. And then for the women, first off, we split up Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. We're doing away with the women's tag team titles. I mean, what's the, really the point of them? We're also doing away with the 24-7 championship. It's kind of stupid at this point. Uh, you have Bailey and Sasha Banks, obviously. Naomi. Recently rehired Sarah Logan is moving over to SmackDown, and we're trying to build her up as well. Then you have Lacey Evans, so we're going to try to build Sarah Logan up to be a star as well. Now, we're going over these pay-per-views. All pay-per-views except the big four, actually there's going to be a big five, will now be known as WWE TakeOver, so no more stupid names. So it's going to be, so you've got your big five, you got the Royal Rumble, all right, that is a big five pay-per-view. Next up, you have WWE TakeOver Elimination Chamber, and that's where you're going to have your... All these big pay-per-views that can lead into something big are going to keep their names. After that, you have WWE TakeOver Indianapolis. I think Indianapolis can be a pretty decent place to hold a show. Then you have WrestleMania 30. This is just a schedule for 2021. It's kind of establishing a schedule for the future. WrestleMania 37, followed by WWE TakeOver Chicago, WWE TakeOver Philadelphia, WWE TakeOver London, because I think it's time to have start having a pay-per-view a year in a foreign country. And no, not Saudi Arabia. Maybe. Maybe, but you're trying to change up like what cities the big shows are going to be in every single year. So, I really want to change it up. You follow that up with SummerSlam. You know, that's one of your big, big five pay-per-views. WWE TakeOver Champions Night. This is basically Clash of Champions. This is where every single title on the roster is defended during the show. This is also, it's not one of the big five. I guess you could consider it. So, maybe I have a big six, actually. But, it's where every single title is defended. WWE TakeOver Hell in a Cell, so you've still got your Hell in a Cell event because, frankly, that's something I want to see. But we're making classic Hell in a Cell matches. We're not making these stupid ones nowadays that are like, you know, no finishes, like no contests. Like, no. Then you have Survivor Series, WWE TakeOver Miami, and that's 12, but that's not your final pay-per-view because next comes up, I guess I consider it your, your big sixth pay-per-view and that's WWE TakeOver Women's Night we're ending the year with an all women's event and personally I think the women I liked the idea of evolution so and it's not going to be pushing them onto you you know basically like I, like I said it's WWE TakeOver Women's Night so you know you're having and this is and that and Survivor Series are kind of the two where you can cross people between brands and have your dream matches and yes like, like you will have your dream matches so getting into some of these notes the royal rumble matches will consist of 10 raw nxt and smackdown superstars 
there will be qualifying matches to get in. So not all, not every spot is going to be qualified for. Some are going to be selected. But, I mean, if you can get at least three or four qualifying matches per brand for, you know, two for the men and two for the women's for each brand, I think that could work, to be honest. So, in Elimination Chamber. So, whichever brand had their superstar win the Royal Rumble, that title for that brand will only be a one-on-one -on -one match. So, say, say um, Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble. Braun Strowman's still your universal champion. He's only going to defend, defend his title one-on-one, -on -one, whereas the NXT and WWE uh, championships will be defended inside an Elimination Chamber match. I mean, I really would love to see an NXT Championship Elimination Chamber match because that would be great. All right, so obviously, you know, so the Royal Rumble... The champion, you set up your dream match there. Your dream match is pretty clear there, whereas the two Elimination Chamber matches, they're kind of unpredictable, so you want to make them unpredictable. You know, I'm never going to make it predictable of what's going to happen. Like, that's my goal. So, WrestleMania 37, we're going to have 10 to 14 matches. Um, we're going to have you know, eight title matches, which would be your WWE Universal and NXT Championship match, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT Women's Championship, your Intercontinental and United States title match, you know, at, well, we're going to have ten title matches. Then you're going to have your Raw and SmackDown tag team title matches. So you've got ten title matches there. All right, then you've got four personal matches where you can kind of build them up as, like, big time matches All right, and it's, and it's going to be a two night event in fact each big each, uh, each of the big four Royal Rumble, Survivor Series SummerSlam, Wrestlemania they're going to be two night events rather than one because I feel like putting 14 they, uh, putting 12 to 16 matches on one night and Royal Rumble Actually, Royal Rumble does not technically have to be two nights because it's going to be two Royal Rumble matches and then like two or three matches in between that. So, you, I mean, that can be a one night. But SummerSlam, Survivor Series, WrestleMania, and Women's uh, Women's Night can be, you know, that can be two night events. And I think that would work really well. So, then you have your Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, that can either take place on the pre-show or the main show. Most likely the main show. The pre-shows are not going to be three hours long. We're going to have like a one-hour pre-show. We're going to try to have a match each night. You know, kind of like they did this year. I think it really worked. But the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal will reward a winner with a mid-card title shot. Whether it's the U.S. Intercontinental or NXT uh, North American Championship. Like... You need a mid-card title match. At Mania 37, Undertaker versus Sting will happen in this scenario. Undertaker will win. Both will retire. And Undertaker will replace me as the new writer for SmackDown. So Mark Calloway is your new writer for SmackDown. Normal pay-per-view pay events. We'll try to keep it around eight matches maybe. Um, basically, I want the shows to be focused on the wrestling rather than antics you know like wrestlemania's got these big concerts no we want to focus we came for wrestling we did not come for a concert we came for wrestling i mean obviously you can always open it up with singing the national anthem or america the beautiful or something like that but we don't need these big ass concerts we don't need these big you know, obviously you can still make some of these entrances special. Like, everybody should have a special entrance. But can we, like, maybe not try to make them as long? I mean, I'm just saying. And, um, well, I've got the big six. They're going to have, like, 12 to 14 matches and be two night events, as I said. Even Champions Night, you can, I mean, that, I don't know if that really need like, has to be a two night event. But we can always make it a two night event, I mean. So, I mean, I guess we can make it a two-night event. And, you know, that's going to include the Cruiserweight title and the, the European or uh, UK championship as well. 
All right, so company will be focused on building new stars and everyone will get a chance to shine. Now, obviously, if you're not working, but basically, my thing is I'm sick and tired of seeing these squash matches happen all the time. So, we're doing away with squash matches. If you make your debut on a show, you're not squashing your opponent. You're having a good match and you're allowed to show what you can do without dominating. You're allowed to put on a good match. That's a good way to get people over. Nobody wants to watch somebody squash somebody in 30 seconds and make a debut. They want to see a wrestling match, and that's why Raw and SmackDown are going... Well, well, we'll get into that. Yeah, here it is. Raw and SmackDown are two-hour shows. NXT is one hour, and it's followed by one more hour of 205 Live. So, and... 205 Live is where TJ Perkins and Justin Gabriel, they both went went there. That's where they're shining. They're shining along with guys like Tony Nese, Rich Swan. You know, they're shining along with those guys. Raw, so each show will have their own brand exclusive kind of show. And actually, my thing is, I might hold these shows put it like the WWE Network's a good thing. I might put these shows on the WWE Network before the show starts. Raw will have the VIP lounge. SmackDown will have Miz TV. NXT will have the Bad News Barrett show. And the Bad News Barrett show has to take place during the actual show. And it's not going to be an every week thing. Like Bad News Barrett is not going to be so much of an in-ring guy. Like he might, he will have matches though, yes. But He's mainly here for the entertainment factor of the Bad News Barrett gimmick because that was one of my favorite things I've ever seen in WWE. And not only am I doing it for the fans, but I also want to make stuff that I like to see. And all three of these are very entertaining to me. You know. So then uh, at Survivor Series, we're going to have two... Uh, you're going to have two five-on-five, on-five elimination tag team matches featuring NXT, Raw, and SmackDown, uh, the women's and the men's. You're going to have the WWE Champion versus the Universal Champion versus the NXT Champion every year. You're going to have the Raw, SmackDown, and NXT Women's Champions face off. You're going to have the IC versus US versus North American Championship. You're going to have the Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT Tag Team Championships. And you're going to have the Cruiserweight Championship match. That'll be the only title defended on that night. And that's made basically to get some exposure for these Cruiserweights who are working their ass off. I also might have a UK Championship match as well. But, yeah. So, basically, that's the plan. Get some exposure for NXT UK and Cruiserweight on a big five pay-per-view. There will be a draft every year, and each superstar is required to swap brands every two years. So basically, your brands are going to change up every two years because you want to keep it fresh. You know, you want to kind of, yeah, keep it fresh. Within five years, each show should feel special and have its own unique flavor. And that's the goal here is to have each show have its own unique flavor. The guys, new guys will become main eventers, and you will no longer see the same three guys main eventing. And that brings me to my final point. That is a big issue with WWE. No more part-timers burying young talent just because, for namesake. You know, if Rock Lesnar, if Goldberg, if they decide not to come back to WWE, I'm willing to pay them. Get Brock, Brock Lesnar two times a year. Goldberg, I'm wanting to retire soon. Edge, I'm willing to willing to let him wrestle two times a year. But I, they're not going to be guys that are going to take up storylines consistently. And they're not going to be champions. I'm sorry. Edge, I could see myself giving him one more title run. But Brock Lesnar doesn't care. So if he, if he don't like it, he can go for all I care. Edge... I know that he's going to do, he just wants to wrestle. I know he's going to do whatever whatever I'm asking of him, and he's going to do it with a smile on his face. And, I mean, 
But Lesnar, Goldberg, I don't care. You guys can go. You can get the hell out of my company. I don't care. Because you're at the end of the day, you're not winning championships. We're building the future. WWE is staying afloat. It's not going to continue to decline. Ratings are going to be high. Basically, I'm willing to bring back the ruthless aggression era. You know, and I know I didn't mention John Cena in this video. We'll give him his 17th title reign, sure. But after that, like, he, he's probably going to drop it pretty soon afterwards. I mean, I'm, I'm just not interested in Cena being champion either, and neither is the, everybody else. You know, and basically, um, that's going to do it, guys. But leave your, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see everyone later. Again, this is What If Raz Took Over the WWE. Real American Studios out. Peace out, all my homies.